I'm a third year pathology resident and uh, I hope that you will enjoy my presentation. Hello to everyone who is watching. In this presentation, I'll talk about a rare occurrence, a metastasis from an entity that very rarely metastasizes, an entity to which the word metastasis is not normally associated. Let's begin. <clears throat> an 83-year-old male was admitted to the emergency ward because of a traumatic femoral fracture. A chest X-ray scan was taken as part of a general examination. This X-ray showed a 3cm nodular lesion in the right lung field and other four small smaller nodular lesions in the left lung field. Before admitting him to the operating theatre, the surgeons requested a fine needle aspiration with a rapid on-site evaluation of the biggest lesion to understand if, the, if this lesion was a malignancy. If it was, then the, the fracture might be pathological, and so the operation would have changed. During the rapid on-site evaluation, the pathologist performed a smear of part of the, of the material. This man was stained with this quick uh, stain. The remaining material was formally fixed. At the microscope, this man was composed of spindle cells, uh, cells arranged individually or in clumps or in uh, whole uh, groups. These cells had a bland uh, cytology uh, with monomorphous oval nuclei, uh, delicate chromatin, and uh, nuclear pseudo inclusions. Uh, we couldn't see any necrosis. Back at the lab, the formerly fixed material was paraffin included to obtain a cell block. From this cell block, some hematoxin and eosin stained slides were cut, and we can see here the, the results. You can better appreciate the architecture of the lesion, composed of spindle cells, monomorphous spindle cells, uh, arranged in groups and in hood with a word configuration. The cells were uh, monomorphous, bland, with oval nuclei and a delicate chromatin. No mitosis and no necrosis were found. This morphological image oriented us toward the primary or metastatic uh, mesenchymal lesion of the lung. These lesions are pretty rare, only composing only 1 to 8 percent of fine needle aspirates. Mostly are uh, reactive or benign. More rarely, there might be some primary malignant or secondary metastatic lesions to the lung that might be um, that might have uh, spindle cell uh, some spindle cell features. And uh, here we can see the various entities that uh, makes the differential diagnosis. In the reactive processes, we can include uh, the granulo granulomas and inflammatory pseudo tumors. Uh, primary benign lesions uh, to consider in uh, the differential diagnosis uh, are schwannomas, solitary fibrous tumors, and hamartomas, and primary malignant uh, spindle cell lesions that have to be considered in the differential diagnosis are uh, squamous cell carcinoma with, uh, spindle, cell, with spindle cell features, sarcomatoid carcinoma, uh, spindle cell sarcoma, or maybe a uh, neuroendocrine neoplasma with uh, some spindle cell features. Uh, metastatic lesions to consider are uh, melanoma, the sarcoma, and malignant fibrous histiocytomas. So we performed uh, some immunohistochemistry to differentiate between all these various entities. <clears throat> Firstly, we performed an cytokeratin, and the stain was negative. Then we performed a KI67 that showed us a low proliferation index. Then we performed a P63 and a TTF1. Uh, the two stains were negative, and so we could exclude a squamous cell carcinoma with the spindle cell features or and an adenocarcinoma with spindle cell features. Then we performed a CD34, then the stain again was negative, and so we could exclude a solitary fibrous tumor. Then we performed an S100, and again, the stain was negative. So uh, we could exclude a metastasis of melanoma. Then we performed a synaptophysin and a chromogranin, and the two stains were negative, and so we could exclude a neuroendocrine carcinoma or, an, or a neuro, neuroendocrine tumor. Then, thinking about the morphology, we performed an EMA and a progesterone receptor. These two stains are positive in uh, a meningioma, 
and again, if you can, if you think about morphology, this morphology is very similar to that of a meningioma. And uh, here we um, add the jackpot. As you can see, the two stains are positive, and so we were leaning towards a diagnosis of meningioma or a metastatic meningioma or a primary meningioma of the lung. And so we phoned to the radiologist and asked him to do a, a CT head scan of the patient. The CT head scan showed a um, nodular lesion, an intracranial nodular lesion in the right hemisphere, and an analogous nodular lesion in the, um, near the sagittal sinuses. These uh, nodular lesions had the characteristics of uh, intracranial meningioma, so our diagnosis was confirmed. The patient had the two intracranial meningiomas that uh, caused the metastasis. Given the age of the patient, the non-operative approach was chosen, and so he didn't undergo surgery for, lung, uh, for the lung and the intracranial lesions. Five years later, again, uh, he was uh, admitted uh, to the emergency ward because he broke the ischiopubic branch. Again, he underwent a routine chest scan. It showed that uh, there were an increase in number and diameter of these uh, lung lesions, as you can see here. So, let's see what the literature says about metastatic meningiomas. But firstly, let's revise what is a meningioma. It's the most common intracranial neoplasm, more than 30% of, ne of intracranial neoplasms. The median age is of the uh, diagnosis is 65 years, with a female to male ratio of 2 to 1. The 2017 Blue, Blue, Blue Book of the WHO uh, classifies them in three grades, 1, 2, and 3, on the basis of mitotic activity, brain invasion, and isomorphological patterns. As you can see, the higher the grade, the higher the recurrence rate, and also anaplastic meningiomas have a median survival of 2 to 5 years. So, let's see what the literature says about metastatic cases. Extracranial disease is rare in meningiomas. Circa 0.1% of meningiomas develops metastasis during their lifetime. The most common sites are lung, bones, intraspinal, pleural, and cervical leaf nodes. Uh, it is, of course, more common in high grades, uh, tumors. Of, and, uh, however, in the literature, 56% of metastatic meningiomas are of low grade, maybe because there is a selection bias. Of course, no one but an eye if a high grade tumor metastasizes. However, if a tumor that is considered borderline benign becomes metastatic, this fact raises a lot of eyebrows. Some risk factors for the development of metastasis have been found in high tumors. These are high severity, cell heterogeneity, high mitotic rate, nuclear paramorphism, tumor necrosis, and vascular invasions. Of course, these don't apply to um, low grade uh, meningiomas, <coughs> and there are two supposed mechanisms of uh, metastatic in initiation in uh, grade 1 uh, meningiomas. One is uh, surgery, uh, so uh, seeding along the surgery margins. Another one is the direct invasion of uh, dural venous sinuses. This second uh, uh, mechanism might be the one uh, of our patient. Uh, as you remember the, from the CT scans, he had a meningioma that was uh, very near the sagittal sinus. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this presentation. Uh, goodbye and thank you.